In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a couple of technologies that help the web move a little bit faster. Those two specific technologies are internet cache and internet cookies. We're gonna start off talking about internet cache. Now, this isn't the good type of cache, nor the good type of cookies. This cache is spelled C-A-C-H-E. And what internet cache allows for is for web pages to load a little bit faster. Now, just a couple of bullet points here. Internet cache is temporary storage of internet files that are stored by the client machine, meaning my own computer. So my own web browser, when I visit a web page, stores those cache files uh, in a specific folder. I'll show you that here in just a minute where exactly those are stored. The internet cache allows for quicker access of commonly requested files. A really simple example is, let's say you visit a website and that website has a logo and that logo is a JPEG image. Well, you don't really want to request that logo from the server every single time you visit the web page because chances are it very rarely changes. So what your computer will do is it will download that logo and store it in a specialized folder on your computer called cache. And then each time you visit that web page, instead of asking the server for that logo, it will just go load it directly from your own computer's file system, which is much, much quicker. So that's kind of how cache works in a very simple manner. Now, other files can be stored inside of cache. You can have video files, you can have JavaScript files, CSS files, images, all sorts of different media that are delivered on the internet. All those types of files can be stored in your computer's cache. And your web browser, these days, they're smart enough to automatically delete the cache files that are old and not accessed very often. So that let's say you visit a web page once a year. Well, you don't want all those assets essentially stored on your computer's hard drive taking up space. So the web browser will temporarily remove old cache files that are not commonly requested and only keep cache in, as using the files that are commonly requested. Now, the second technology is what we call internet cookies. Now, one difference between these, they're both temporary storage, but internet cookies are stored by the server. So when I visit a website, let's say I go to my favorite website, the server itself can store a file on my computer that then can be used for various different actions. So that's one of the main difference between cache and, cache and cookies. Client machine stores the cache. Server machine will actually be the one who creates and stores the cookie on my computer. Now, what cookies allow for are things like auto logins. Some websites, you'll see a little checkbox that says, remember password. Cookies allow for that feature to happen, session management. And then also cookies actually allow for tracking. Uh, so uh, your website can track your usage. They can track when you come to a website, when you go back and leave and all sorts of things like that can be tracked through sessions. And cache files, unlike, or sorry, rather cookie files, unlike cache files are typically just simple text files with a bunch of random uh, letters and numbers inside of the the files themselves. And again, in a second, I'll show you exactly what a cookie file looks like and we'll peek inside of those. Now, if you remember back to lesson one, we talked about HTTP and how it's a stateless protocol. And what that means is when I visit a website, I can't stay connected with that website. It doesn't remember who I am from request to request to request. So what cookies allow for is for that website to then maintain a connection with me. So a really simple example is let's say I go to Amazon.com and I want to put some items in my shopping cart. Well, that would be impossible with regular HTTP because it can't remember who I am from click to click to click. So what Amazon does is they take a little cookie and they store it on my computer and that cookie uniquely identifies me. Typically, it's just a hash of some sort of user ID. So that, let's say I come back to Amazon tomorrow and I pull up the website. Sure enough, my cart already has the items stored in it that I put in there yesterday. And that's because when I request a website, if that website has stored a cookie on my computer, I send that cookie to the server along with my request so that when Amazon server gets that request, it says, aha, this is Andrew visiting us. Let's pull up all of Andrew's information and display that for him nice here in the, in the website. So that's how uh, cookies are used. 
Now, they can also be used to track you. So another simple example on Amazon is that let's say I click on a bunch of products. Let's say I'm shopping for towels and I'm clicking on towels all over the place. And then I just leave the website and let's say I come back two weeks later, long, long time later, and I log in or I don't, I don't log in. I just go to amazon.com. You'll see down there at the bottom, it'll say, last time you were here, you were looking at towels. You also might want to check out this product and this related product and this related product because they remembered what I checked out last time because they stored a cookie on my computer. And so then they're going to specifically target and advertise directly to me based on the things I previously were looking at. And that's what cookies enable as well. So a lot of people don't like cookies because of that feature where the browsers and and these sort of big websites, tech companies can track you. In fact, you've probably seen it's almost impossible to avoid. uh, A lot of websites you visit now will pop up a big giant popover message that says this website uses cookies. Click here to agree to our cookie policy. Now, the reason why those are so prevalent these days is because there was a law passed in the European Union that said if a website uses cookies, you have to let the users know. So now almost every website pops up these super annoying messages that says this website uses cookies, click to accept. The problem is that still 99% of the people have no idea what cookies are, so they just click accept anyway. So while the law maybe had good intentions, its reality is it hasn't really done served its purpose at all. It's just mostly annoying at this point. But that's why you see those pop-ups all over the place about internet cookies is because of that law. So that's a little bit of the basics between cache and cookies. Now let's jump right into our web browser and I'll show you exactly where those are stored and what they look like. I'm inside of the browser Firefox here. I'm going to show you where these cache and cookies are in Firefox. They're in a little bit different place in each of the browsers, but they're typically in the preferences section under privacy or cookies or internet files. Search for those terms and you'll be able to find it in your browser. So first, let's take a look. What you do here in Firefox is you just go to the Firefox and go down to your preferences menu. And then once you're in preferences, you can just do a little search. So if you just type in C-A-C-H-E, you'll see that it pulls up the section about cookies and site data. Site data is what they call cache. So what we can take a look at here is first I'm going to clear the data. So I'm going to clear out all of the cache and cookies that are currently stored on my browser. So I'm just going to clear everything so we're back to a clean slate. So you can kind of see how this works. So there's zero bytes of data currently being stored on this browser. Okay, so let's go to the website, amazon.com, like I just talked about before. So I'm going to leave this tab open. I'm going to open this up in a new tab so we can visit back there. So we'll go to amazon.com. And you can see here now I'm on Amazon. Notice how it doesn't know who I am. I'm not signed in. I'm just a blank person, right? I'm a brand new person here. So as I scroll around, let's go ahead and click on a couple of products. So we'll click on this USB thing here and that looks kind of nifty. Maybe we'll come down here and look at some related products and click on a couple of these. So I'm just kind of building a bit of a breadcrumb about myself as I'm clicking around here. Remember, Amazon is tracking every single click, every single thing I visit. They're building a profile on me, even though I'm completely anonymous at this point. I'm just a regular old user. They don't know who I am. So now let's go back to our preferences here. And let's go ahead and refresh this. So we're going to go back to our cache. And let's go into here to this um, manage data. And it doesn't look like there's anything stored. Oh, yeah, there is. So there's some cached content. So you can see now there is 35 megabytes of cache. Remember, that's the storage files that are stored on my computer. So I actually had to quit Firefox and relaunch Firefox to make this data appear. But now when I come into my Manage Data tab, look at all these files that are now stored inside of my cookies. So Amazon.com has one, Cookies, Associates Amazon has one, Amazon Ads has two, Mozilla Firefox itself stored two cookies, Mozilla stored three, NinthDecimal.com, I have no idea what that even is. Uh, I did not visit this website, but they stored a cookie on my browser. That's probably from an ad network or something like that. And then Amazon itself, again, stored seven more cookies. So look at all these cookies. That's very interesting. So let's uh, take a look at these. So you can just click on these and you can just delete them um, if you you know, if you know want. But you can also see the contents of these cookies. Now, different browsers will let you actually right click and look at the contents right here. 
uh, Firefox doesn't let us do that in this version. So we're going to have to actually go find these files directly on the file system. This is going to be different if you're on a Mac or a PC and all web browsers store them in a different location. But I'll show you where this specific version of Firefox stores these files so you can take a look. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to find these files in Firefox's storage inspector. So if we right click and we head down to our inspect element, they have a section over here uh, called storage. You can see it's kind of right there. So if I click on the storage, this will show me the various categories. So you can see over here on the far left, I have my cache storage, my cookies, and then session, index, and local storage. So let's open up the cookies section, and you can see these exact cookies right here. So this is the literal contents of these cookies. So you can see on the first one, it doesn't look like there's actually anything. On the second one, it looks like they're storing an add ID. So that's the domain. And then the value of this cookie is right here. So there's just a, like I said, it's just a bunch of random string, but this means nothing to me, but it does mean something to Amazon because that's the unique tracking ID for my IP address. And we come down to this one and here's all sorts of stuff, right? So there's some sessions, there's some international preferences. So this is where they store what my preferred language is. You can see over here, the value is USD or US dollar. So it's storing some information about, you know, my locale and my language and whatnot. Some skin, uh, you know, skins, who knows what a lot of these things are, but there's a bunch of cookies and this is the values of each of those cookies. Most of them is just a bunch of random characters. So that's just on uh, Amazon here. Let's take a look at the cache. So if we open up the cache, you can see there's various couple files in here that are part of the cache. So inside of Firefox's storage inspector, you can see exactly what cookies and cache are being stored uh, on the specific web page you're currently looking at. But I'm gonna just gonna browse to a couple other websites here and you'll see that there's gonna be a lot of things stored. So let's just go to cnn.com. And again, I'm just gonna click around kind of at random here just to make sure that this website starts to build some cookies and tracks a little bit. Looks like here's a thing about a Twitter so we can come over here. Let's maybe go over to YouTube. Or Google let's go to google.com and let's do a search for hello and we'll start to click around here go to Miriam Webster click on this so I'm just kind of building a little bit of a profile okay now let's go back so I'm gonna quit Firefox and relaunch it Firefox and you'll see these different cookie files and cache files okay so I've relaunched Firefox let's go back to that same cache preference and click on our manage data and now look at how many of these are stored. So CNN stored three cookies. Um, Google stored six, one. Tree.com, again, I didn't even visit that website, but it stored two cookies. OneTrust.com, I didn't visit that website. It stored a cookie. And you're, you're asking yourself, well, how are these cookies stored on my computer if I didn't even visit the website? Probably through ad networks. So there was probably an ad displayed on CNN.com that was from tree.com or something like that and they were running an ad on cnn so they actually stored a cookie on my computer via that ad network so ad networks are notorious for storing cookies and tracking you all over the place and that's how ad companies are actually able to track you from one website to the other website even though you never uh, visit that ad company so look at all these i mean there's cookies cookies everywhere miriam, miriam webster stored eight cookies on my computer uh on their website another three there so there's just tons of these things, right? And I only visited three or four websites and I already have, I don't know, close to 50 plus cookies, maybe even close to 100 cookies from four or five websites that were stored. So pretty amazing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at where these are on the file system. In Firefox on the Macintosh computer, they store them in your user library folder. So you can see here, you have to go to your hard drive, then your user, then your user, then your library application support, Firefox profiles, this little thing that's called something.default. And then in here, you'll find this cookies.sqlite file. And this is where Firefox is actually storing those values for all of the various cookies. Now in Firefox, you can also type in here about cache, about colon cache up there and hit return. And this will show you a little bit of information about the cache. So you can see this is how much memory it's taking, how much storage is being used, uh, where it's storing the cache, whether it's in memory or on the disk, the locations. So there's a few things like this that you can take a look at and you can click on list the cache entries 
and this shows you all of the various cache files that are on your computer. So anyway, that is where Firefox stores the cache. And again, it's different on every browser and operating system. But hopefully you learned a little bit about what internet cache and what internet cookies are, how they're used, and how they help uh, things kind of move along on the internet as far as page speed and then session management where you can have yourself automatically log into a system and have that website remember you and all of your habits and whatnot. So we will see you in the next tutorial where we are going to start the design process of building our websites. We're going to talk a little bit about user interface design, web design, and we'll start the process of actually sketching and designing out a website.